Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we pick the right topics, get the right guests, ask them all the relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We're live and interactive. Tonight, we're looking at Parliament, not from the Chamber, but from the Law Courts. There are three big cases running which could change the way Parliament looks. As we know, this is the tightest we've had, 137, 137, one independent. But there are three important cases which have been determined in the course of the year that could change that look. First, we have the Asin North constituency, where James Jachi question is facing some big issues. He appealed the judgment in, that started in July last year. He did not succeed. We'll be speaking about what that could mean for the people of that constituency. We'll also look at Jomoro constituency, where the MP is also being challenged over dual citizenship. And finally, we'll look at Techiman South as well. In that case, the ruling government has a candidate who is the MP, the opposition is taking the matter to court. I have two crack lawyers in studio to talk to me. When we come back, I'll tell you who they are and how we proceed. So welcome back. So tonight on The Point of View, we're looking at three key cases which could determine the look of Parliament. As you know, we have a very tight floor, 137 NDC MPs, 137 MPP MPs, and one independent candidate who happens to be the second Deputy Speaker of Parliament who has sided with the majority. But we have very thin numbers. As we know, quite a number of issues in Parliament have gone down to the wire. So tonight we ask, what do these three cases mean for the possible look of Parliament? My guest in studio is not an MP, but is a lawyer. One of the key legal team members of the opposition NDC is in the person of lawyer, Edu Jitamaklu. Good evening, welcome to the show. Good evening, Bernard. Happy and, uh, 40th. In, I think you had your birthday a few weeks ago. That is correct. Welcome to the fourth floor. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, like I always say, we are fortunate to be the children of Rollins, you know. <laughs> and you know, they always say that we have the Rollins chain. Oh, you mean children, in, as in, you were, you were, okay, not as in Rollins children, no, but no, no. children when Rollins, okay, so 81, yeah, 82. That is so. Fantastic. That is so. We'll talk about that later. I'll also be joined by Gary Nimakun. He's also on the MPP legal team. He'll join us digitally via Zoom. He'll join us in a few seconds. Now, we want to start with three cases. The first one being the Asin North case. So that case started quite a while back and there was a seminal issue in July. But I believe you know how that team proceeded because you started the defense yeah. and sort of handed it over. Now, how big a setback is what was decided a couple of days ago? Because I think you had appealed a particular judgment and that appeal failed. So how do you contextualize that failure of the appeal? Where does that leave lawyer Jachi Kwesin? Okay, so Bernard, once again, good evening to your cherished viewers. I need to first point out that our appeal has not failed. Okay. What actually happened, per the rules of the Court of Appeal, once you filed a notice of appeal, you need to do what we say, you know, put in or compilation of the records. Mm. Now, once the records are done, a particular form called Form 6 is transmitted. Now, based on that, you are supposed to go to the court and the court will make further directions. Now, something significant happened. Now, when we filed the notice of appeal, mm. we proceeded to file what we call further grounds of appeal. Okay. Whereupon we argued that we want to set a different ground of appeal. That is to say that the reference mm -hmm. or the, the point of disagreement mm -hmm. relates to Article 94 mm. of the 1992 Constitution. Mm. And you note that the reference to Article 94 relates particularly to, in the case of J.G. Kwesen, mm -hmm. the question, the key question, whether or not at the time when he put himself up for election, he did owe allegiance to a country other than Ghana. Now, the point we have maintained all throughout mm. is that from 1992, when this constitution was birthed, mm -hmm. We've not had the benefit of the APS courts okay. pronouncing on the true scope of Article 94. Mm. The earliest that we have come close is the Senator matter. But in terms of the full scope of 94, we've not had the benefit. And mm -hmm. so the point we made was that 
around October 1992, if you recall, mm. when the NDC <coughs> put Jerry Rawlings as its presidential candidate in 1994, mm -hmm. there was a gentleman by name Belson. He approached the High Court at that point and indicated that, you see, Jerry Rawlings has a Scottish father and a Ghanaian mother. Mm -hmm. And that he owe allegiance to Scotland as well as Ghana. Yeah. And for which reason he could not, as it were, become the president of Ghana. So he approached the High Court for a declaration to that effect and applied for an injunction to restrain the NDC and Jerry Rawlings from mm -hmm. putting himself up. Mm. Then the High Court ruled that, you know what, Jerry Rawlings having been a military officer, he's taken allegiance, he's sworn an oath of allegiance to defend Ghana, among other things. So the court basically dismissed the claim. Mm. But from 1992 October to date, mm. the Apex Court had not had that opportunity. So when this Asenov matter came, mm. remember that there was an application to injunct him from, from even taking in. exactly. Yes. So in that application, we argued that at the core of that claim is mm. the question of whether or not Jeechi Kwesin owe allegiance to a country other than Ghana. Okay. And for we're praying the court that by reason of Article 132, which says in clear mandatory terms mm -hmm. that in the course of any proceedings, mm -hmm. once an issue of interpretation arises, mm -hmm stay proceedings and refer the matter to the APS court. Okay. So we made that application to the High Court judge. Malena Senior then, uh, Senior Frank Davis, together with Gary, opposed that application for stay and referral. Mm. Then we said no problem. So he was injuncted, you remember? Yes. Then the substantive matter, when it came for what we call setting down the issues for trial, we again revisited the question of staying proceedings and referring that constitutional interpretative matter to the APS court. Again, okay. it was opposed mm. by reason of the fact that they claim that the constitutional provision is clear, it admits of no ambiguity, and so there was no point of referring the matter. And in fact, in the July judgment of the High Court, mm -hmm. he proceeded to say that that particular provision of the constitution mm. was clear and was without ambiguity. And for that matter, he could proceed to deal with it in the manner in which he did. Mm. So when we formulated the grounds of appeal relative to the appeal that we filed, we indicated that that was going to be a critical issue. So I recall that Marlene Senior, um, 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 Mr. Chikata, when he appeared before the, the Court of Appeal, he indicated to the Court of Appeal that you know what? By reason of Article 132, mm -hmm. I still think that you need to refer Article 94 mm -hmm. for its own scope to be decided by the Supreme Court. The Court of Appeal refused that application. Mm. So when the Court of Appeal refused that application, obviously it was opposed by uh, Marlene Senior Frank Davis. When the Court of Appeal refused, Marlene Senior, Mr. Chikata, then file what we call sessoral application at the Supreme Court and said that by reason of the powers of the Supreme Court, mm. it should stay the proceedings at the Court of Appeal and refer to itself the key interpretative matter in of Article 94. 94 so that once the APS Court decide on it, it binds all the courts below, then we can proceed. That application, while that application was pending, then Malena Senior, Frank Davis, now issues a writ on behalf of the same uh, petitioner, now asking for interpretation of the same Article 94, which they opposed during the injunction application, the substantive hearing, the Court of Appeal. He now issues a writ that Supreme Court, Article 94 is ambiguous. So by reason of your powers under Article 2, proceed to interpret 94. Now, I find that extremely strange because right from the High Court, they have opposed all application to refer 94 to the Supreme Court. Now, we have a situation where they themselves have now brought themselves before the APS Court. Mm -hmm. But at that time, there was a pending matter, which is the Sessorara application. Mm. 
The Court of Appeal now makes an order that filed your legal argument mm -hmm. to permit the appeal to proceed. I see. But Mr. Chikata then indicates that, you know what, I've applied to the Supreme Court to stay your proceedings. So while that application is pending for determination, mm. we cannot proceed mm. until a determination is made. Mm. Now the Supreme Court, by a 3-2 decision, refused the application for referral and the stay. By which time we needed to go back to the Court of Appeal. When we went back to the Court of Appeal, the position, the Registrar of the Court of Appeal that had brought what we call the affidavit of non-compliance and indicated that by the orders of the Court of Appeal, we've not complied. And so the appeal which is pending ought to be struck out for non-compliance. And so that is what occasioned the incident two days ago, I mean yesterday, sorry, where the notice of appeal was struck out for non-compliance. Now, we all do know, and then every practitioner knows, that where an appeal is struck out for non-compliance, because you did not file your legal arguments and others, the option available is to relist. And so... So you're saying it's not a substantive determination no. of the matter. And it's that because is why, you failed to exactly. respond so you based on that, the You previous. notice that mm. the Court of Appeal made it very clear mm. that what they are doing is to strike out. I see. The legal effect of striking out is that there has not been a determination of merits. Mm. When the appeal is dismissed, the legal effect is that you can only appeal it. Okay. That is a federal appeal. But you see, the Supreme Court has earlier decided in the case of Zakaria and Yimaka around 1992. You remember the famous Willing C by election. That an issue bordering on parliamentary election challenge terminates at the Court of Appeal. Legal scholars have made the point that the dissenting opinion proffered by Sofakufu, then JSC, should be the position of the law. That is to say, there should be a further right of appeal to uh, the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. I mean, that's a matter left for legal scholarship. So, so just to be clear, yeah. the team for the adjudication sees what happened on the 22nd a couple of days ago, not as a substantive no, determination No, 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 no. I mean, the, the court itself, and yes. I'm, I'm sure every practitioner... I'm sure, when, when I ask the other side... Exactly. They, they, so, so what is the next action of the defendant in the case? Or I think I can use the word defendant because the original issue, the plaintiff is from the other side. Yeah. Are you going back to the Supreme okay, Court? Okay, so, so you say it's important I raise this. As we speak, mm. there's a pending rate mm. at the Supreme Court in respect of the same matter. Which they brought. They brought. Okay. So that matter is yet to be determined. Is it the same thing you were looking for? In the terms same of, thing. So interpretation of 94, Four. Uh, is it two? 94, two. Because you see, the position that we have taken, and I need to explain this. At the core of 94 is the question of owing allegiance to a country other than Ghana. Mm. We have indicated that when you say, I owe allegiance to a country other than Ghana, mm -hmm. right? What are the incidents? Mm. If I write, for instance, to the Canadian authorities, or my lawyers apply, that going forward, I do not want to have anything to do with Canada. Does it mean from that time, I refuse to owe allegiance to Canada? Mm. D does it also mean that the question of my refusal to owe allegiance to Canada, mm. Canada only kicks in at the time when the Canadians accept. Acknowledge that. I get your point. So we have made a point that we have applied much earlier because, you see, something happened, and I, I need to explain mm. it. In the specific case of J.C. Quason, when he became the NDC parliamentary candidate, he caused the uh, constituency chairman of Asenov to do an application, a write-up, more like a letter, accompanied it with an application to the Canadian's authority that having become the NDC parliamentary candidate, mm -hmm. I cannot proceed to be a Canadian citizen. But just around the time that COVID struck, so COVID and others delayed the mm -hmm. processing of it. So eventually, the certificate of renunciation came on the 26th day of November, 2020, by which time he had filed nomination. However, concerned citizens of Asenov filed what we call a petition against him, that we are aware that this man is also a Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. So electoral commission 
disqualify him from contesting the election. Mm -hmm. Now, when it happened, the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. headquarters invited Jeju Kwesin to Accra and said, this is the petition that we have. What do you have to say to it? He then provided a certificate of renunciation by, because by that time it, it had, had come. come. Presented it. Then the Electoral Commission then qualified him to go ahead. Which is why the plaintiffs are also challenging the EC's exactly. uh, actions. Now we are saying that the independence of the Electoral Commission obviously has been upheld by several judicial pronouncements. Mm. So if the Electoral Commission is minded to say that he was not qualified, they would have said so. Now for the Electoral Commission to accept the certificate of renunciation and now proceeded to allow him to contest, it lies foul in the mouth of anybody. So that is the interpretation we had put. I see. But I'm and sure now they are challenging that, yeah. you see. And, and it's He's good on. That, Gary is on. Let me yes, just get his point. Yes, it's good that Senior, uh, yeah. uh, Gary is on it. Because, yeah. you see, I, I need to make this 30 seconds pronouncement. You see, I had argued Zanato with him, mm -hmm. as party Zanato, where the Supreme Court had made a point that the only time you can make a pronouncement whether or not a person is qualified is at the time when nominations are opened. Okay. And so their position is that because the certificate of renunciation came November, After but the then the electoral commission opened of, uh, nomination in October, he is deemed not qualified. And we contend that the question of nomination period had further been construed by the Supreme Court in Esparti, Pakwisi Hindu, Electoral Commission as an interested party. If you recall, in 2016, Hindu men others were disqualified by the Electoral Commission. They went to the High Court. Subsequently, the matter went to the Supreme Court. And her ladyship, uh, you know, uh, Sophia Dina, made the point that the question of nomination period is expansive because the Electoral Commission is given the opportunity to vet mm. nominations, among other things. So that is what we have said. And I get your point, Fred. Right from the beginning, we have said that. So you are basically saying that this is not over yet. No, no, no. No, no. We are Let me just see whether close. that's what the team on the other side thinks. Gary yeah. Nimaku is the, a member of the legal team of the MPP. And incidentally, he's been he's on almost all these cases. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. he's very familiar with matters. Been, you know, You've been sparring with him uh -huh, in court. On this matter. Gary, thank you for joining us. Good evening. Uh, Bena, how are you? I'm very well. It's good to see you. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm very tired, but uh, let me try to miss some very input before I sleep. Fantastic. You know, I, look, brother, yeah. There, clearly, I think that today is very hot. It's hot because, you know, on one breath, he's saying that he argues after with me, which is correct. Mm -hmm. Another breath, he's saying that uh, Mr. Pusin has renounced, renounced the, 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 the citizenship. Mm -hmm before the filing. If indeed that is so, then there, there's no case for the petitioner. If indeed the resolution was done prior to the filing of the nomination with the EC, then there's no case. And there's no case. The fact of the matter is that at the time when Mr. Kwesi filed the nomination with the Electoral Commission in October 2020, he was still holding on to the career citizenship. That's the fact of the matter. Mm. The fact of the matter. So, if you look at a date when the certificate was issued to him, that was on 26 November 2020, just before the elections. Clearly, it means at the time when he filed the nomination to contest, mm -hmm. and indeed he has said that he was only a Ghanaian citizen, and at the same time he was only a, 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 a he was he had renounced the citizenship. Yeah. He was still holding the Ghanaian citizenship. So. <laughs> You see, these are very bare facts that mm. my brother Tamaklo, you know, he's a, he's a very honest man. Uh -huh, he's a very honest man. But sometimes he tries to play the propaganda. You know, I see. The bottom line is that the MP, that is uh, Mr. Kwesi, when he filed the nomination with the EC, he was still holding on to the Canadian citizenship. It's a fact that nobody can deny. It's a fact. I see. And you see, these are all document, document, documentary, documentary evidence. Mm. This case is about documentary evidence. There's nothing about anything about aura or parole, parole evidence. Mm. So whatever you see is backed by documents. 
I'm telling you on evidence or whatever it is that on 26 November 2020, that is when he had the certificate of realization. Fair so enough. Clearly, I just wanted to get a point from you. The appeal of judgment annulling the parliamentary election, this appeal that was sort of thrown out for you, is that the end of the matter? Because his interpretation of that is that it was purely because of non-compliance and that the, the substantive matter can still stand. And in fact, he's telling me that your side has actually asked the Supreme Court to interpret 94 two as well, which was what they originally wanted to do. So the victory you have is not substantive yet. The, the battle is not over. From your side, do you think this is a done deal? For which reason we should be lacing our boots for a by-election? Well, let me say that uh, the rules of court, as a stance, you will have to comply. And my brother understands that when the court gives you some days to file written submissions, within a period, you ought to comply. If you don't comply and then struck out, yes, you may want to release. But releasing is not out of, out of rights. When you release or you want to release, you can't wait with the leave of the court to release. The court may grant you leave, the court may not grant you leave. If the court, if the court grants you leave, that is fine. You can release. Mm. The court has not granted you leave. It means that that's the, end, that's, the, that's, the end, that's the end of the day. Because, you see, it is very clear that when they file the processes at the, at the, at the court of appeal, Mm. With the subsequent and all the antecedent matter they were filing at the, at the Supreme Court and other places, you realize that they were not interested in filing or dealing with the appeal itself mm. at all. Because why? You have filed an appeal, notice of appeal, and then subsequently you file for stay of execution. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, you now file for uh, uh, application for leave to file additional kind of appeal. Subsequently, you file a matter for. Uh, you know, so much, but there's some, some, some applications. But the question I'm asking is that why were you not interested in pursuing your appeal itself? So it's not as of rights that once you've been, you've been thrown out or struck out for non compliance, you can just come by way of as of right. No, you have to go to the court to show cause mm. why the court must allow you to file the appeal again. Mm. So that's not a done deal. But just to be clear, have you asked the Supreme Court to interpret 94? to yourself? Has your side asked for that? We have, we, have, we have done so because they went there first. We also went there. <laughs> they went there first. We also went there. Has the Supreme Court <laughs> adjudicated on that yet? Well, it's not yet completed. So we we'll all wait. That's why I, I would have I will prefer that they, they themselves wait. Let us all stay in the Supreme Court. Mm. Let the Supreme Court decide one way or the other. If the Supreme Court says that, well, 94 is in Paris Pasu with uh, General Admiral Rollins, as my brother just indicated. Then we are home and dry. So that is the, the that's the substantive otherwise. matter we are waiting for. When the Supreme Court pronounces on that, all the lower courts will just align. So basically, exactly, that's exactly, the hurdle. Exactly. So so my point is that is the, 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 the battle is not over yet. It, it, it's not over. You know, you know, <laughs> NDC, NDC, NDC. Uh, they have lawyers who, who can just file papers just to procrast procrastinate the matter. They just <laughs> file papers on file papers. You know, you know, Thomas was sitting there. I know him. He's a crafty boy. <laughs> he will they will file the papers and he will be a chief architect, uh, uh, Mr. Tigata, a senior lawyer. They keep filing the papers and filing the papers and filing papers and filing papers. It's all part of the practice. I'm not I'm not saying that you're wrong. But I you see, I did. Mm. I did. You should all understand that justice one day, one day to come to an end. Fair but enough. You see, mm -hmm. Let's understand one fact. The bottom line is that you know very well that at the time when you were filing with the EC, you knew your status when you were filing with the EC. You knew it. You knew it. So Yet they are pushing you mm -hmm. and pushing you and pushing you. Let's see how it goes on one day. Fair enough. But I'm telling you, I'm we'll, telling you that one day, when the when when the targets are drawn, you come back to me and ask me, Mister Dimapo, you ask me this question, and I say, well, I thought that the right thing should have been done from day one. Me, in my view, in my very humble view, I think that Mister Kwesin was wrong. I see. From the very beginning. I, 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 to what? the extent that, to the extent that, to the extent that, to the extent that, which is it does it to me. Mm -hmm. To the extent that I have seen documents that he himself signed, and he said that 
he was only a Ghanaian at a time of filing statutory declaration. And then said he's only a Ghanaian. When in fact he was not only a Ghanaian, he was only the Ghanaian citizenship. These are matters of documentary evidence. And Tamakro, he knows. Mm. Tamakro, he knows. So please, they should not mislead a gentleman. All right. They should mislead the man. Thank you. We'll, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll deal with other matters. I noticed that there are also other issues around counts of criminal offenses in terms of uh, perjury, forgery, and things, which I believe the the state wants to bring against him we'll come to that we and are, also we are, we are going to pursue we are going to pursue to the to the end because you know uh we have had issues with the uh, second day and the rest i will not i will not uh, yes i get that the, i I, 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 I will bring you back on that so just hold on for me i'll, I'll just announce that we'll take we'll deal with that when we come back and we'll look at jomoro as well which i know both of you are also familiar with the similarities and the differences in the jomoro matter and w whether that is also getting close to determination. And of course, we'll deal with Techiman South. This is the point of view. Tonight is a legal education night in studio, Edu Jitamaklo on DC, on Zoom, Gary Nimako, MPP. Stay with us. Welcome back to the point of view. So tonight we're looking at the legal issues pertaining three seats. We have the Asin North seat, we have the Jomoro seat, and then we have the Tichiman South seat. My guest in studio, lawyer Edu Jetamaklo, NDC legal team, lawyer Garini Makun, via Zoom, MPP legal team. I don't think we should spend all the time talking about Asin. I think we've done enough on Asin. No, no I, I, I just wish that. Let me just... Um Respond to a, a, a quick rebuttal, yeah, a which quick I believe rebuttal. you also rebut. Yes. <laughs> well, let's go. Uh, yes. And uh, first is the reference to the Adamu Dramani Sakande matter. Mm. I think that it's important to raise this point. And mm. I've heard a lot of people draw a certain parallel with mm. the Sakande matter. Mm. With the greatest respect to his memory, obviously he's dead. And um, I, without, you know, trying to invoke a certain memory. I wish to point out this. As at the time, mm. Dramani Sakande became an MP for Boku. He still retained his British and Burkina Bay passports. Mm. In fact, but for the intervention of the national security, we didn't even know that he was still a dual national even when he was still an MP. Significant mm. difference. Mm. And so I've heard, my friend, and anybody who had the benefit, because I was doing a similar matter, I had to go to Justice Chris Cost, Court to recover the entire records, and the facts are there. Mm. So there are two different matters. And let nobody... So raising it. it may not be fair in No, your no, view. no. Raising, raising it may not be fair. And I want Bernard, to be fair Bernard. to the... I want to be fair to Bernard. the memory Bernard. of the late... No, Gary, Gary, I'll come to you. Gary, I'll come to you. Give me a, give me a minute. Bernard. Gary, give me a minute. True, I have heard... Give me a minute. I'll come to you. My learned friend make the point that mm. we should stop misleading the gentleman. With the greatest Bernard. respect. Bernard. With the greatest respect, Gary. At the level of our professional competences, Right? When a person takes a decision to contest, the person is challenged. The electoral body is permitted, right, to vet. The electoral commission does the vetting and says, on the basis of our vetting of your certificate of renunciation, we are permitting you to go ahead and contest, mm. right? Then now you go to court and say, I have deceived a public officer by reason of it being a crime. And the complainant in this case is not the electoral commission. Who is supposed to have been deceived? <laughs> now you go and pick your central regional secretary of MPP as the complainant. Has he been deceived? Are you saying he doesn't have capacity? Has he been deceived? He's a member of the public. He's in the constituency. But He's, the decision has affected him. But how? The decision was to the electoral commission. The electoral commission said... We have received a petition in respect of you. What says that? At least our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus, had the benefit of confronting his accusers. <laughs> Yet the Electoral Commission did not act as Pontius Pilate. 
they decided to vet his certificate of renunciation and said, go ahead. How come that the Electoral Commission is not the complainant if they were in fact deceived? I mean, how so your is point this? is that this criminal case is trying to say that... No. You see, look, you see, at the point, and that is the difficulty I've always had. Article 88, prosecutorial powers, is vested in the executive. Now, this is an executive arm, which is challenged in parliament. And so, as part of these tools available to the executive, is prosecution. And we all know that the prosecutorial powers of the attorney general can be weaponized for political mischief purposes. That is the situation that we have. And my learned friend, Gary Nimaku, is fully aware. And you heard him say, we are going to persuade this matter to its logical conclusion. What is his interest? What exactly is his interest? So you are saying that matter? if somebody should feel aggrieved, it should be the easy. And this least he cannot say they were aggrieved because they had a benefit. Good. Let me take his quick comment on Please. that and move on. So he says Dramani Sekande is not uh, a comparable situation. <laughs> Just a quick response. Gary, yes, you are on. You see, you see, you see my brother is very hot. Ah. He is very hot. You see, he purported that the decision that, uh, that uh, was taken by the Supreme Court in a case I conducted with him on the other side, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court made it very clear that when the EC opens nomination, as the end of the kicks in, all qualification criteria, it kicks in. <laughs> is it forgetting all those things on, the, on your show now? That that is a, a, a different case. How is it a different case? On one breath, he was happy on the other time when they were doing the lot of Marronis. Today, now he's not he's saying that, oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't apply now. Please, it applies in <laughs> private person. Hmm. You are laughing. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. You see, don't laugh. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is that, uh, uh, Bernard, you know, myself and Gary, we have a long history. You know, in Zenato, we both argue Zenato at the Supreme Court significantly. So, we are no, Gary, go on. Gary, go ahead. Gary, go on. Go on. Go on. Bernard, listen to me, please. Go on. The bottom line is that, the bottom line is that all qualification criteria will kick in at a time EC opens nomination to, mm. for filing. The question is, at the time when Mr. Kwesinfa had he renounced the citizenship of the Canadian citizen, is it yes or no? If the answer is yes, there's no case. Okay. If the answer is no, Let there's a case. That's what, the point. What about this? What, what about this? It is not at a time. What Sorry. about the second leg? Sorry. The second leg of the prosecution that he feels the AG is weaponizing prosecutorial powers. No, 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 no. The Attorney General, the Attorney General is doing a very good job. <laughs> One. One. The Attorney General, the Attorney General, how we been seen with the facts of the matter? How we been seen with the evidence of this case? Is realizing that, look, at a time when you filed and you said that, and but listen to me carefully, please. Mm -hmm. I have seen all these documentation with my eyes, my ocular eyes. Look at my eyes, ocular eyes. <laughs> now, I have read all these three papers, okay? And Attorney General says that, look, at a time when you were filing with the EC, at that time, you said you were only a Ghanaian. Mm. And you did a certain declaration. And in that declaration, you said that you were only a Ghanaian. And yet, you were holding to your Canadian citizenship. And look at it, look at it, the, the dates. Mr. Question filed with the EC between 5th to 9th of October. 5th of 2020, 5th of October 2020. However, he obtained the citizenship for representation on 26th of November 2020, before the elections. Question. At the time when you were filing, were you a Ghanaian fully and fully, or you were still holding to another citizenship? The question for the court to determine. But on a matter of fact, clearly you will see that, mm. as I'm telling you, when he was filing, he wasn't holding on to it. All right. Now, any argument that 
when you put in argument for certificate of organization, it should be deemed that you are already, the intention is that, oh, you want to renounce, so you are finished. Forgetting that under Canadian law, you must have been able to go to the process okay. to renounce. See, let's Bernard, move, let's Bernard, move to, let's Bernard, move to. No, no, Bernard, no, no, just no, 30 no, no, seconds. See, we no, are not, 30, no, the case seconds. is not finished. No, let's Bernard, move to No, 30 Romero. seconds, 30 mm. seconds, so that he can respond. You see, Bernard, if you look at the representation of the people's law, mm. PNDC law 284. You will tell you, you see, you will no, you hold, will on, hold on, hold on. Session 20, session 21D. Let me just read. Grant for quality. Ground for cancelling election result D mm -hmm. that the candidate was at the time of his election Elect a elections. person not qualified mm. or a person disqualified for election at the time. So we are talking about the election law. When was the election held? Of course, it's, it's December. He had a certificate of renunciation where 26. <laughs> so I am saying that you cannot pigeonhole the argument. Laws are read as a whole. Mm. You need to read the laws, our electoral laws, as exactly. a whole. And I'm saying, exactly. by reason of the representation of the people's law, and which is familiar with, Section 20 says, you can cancel an election if, at the time of the person's election, he was not qualified. That is part of our law. I see. Session 20 has no, not no. been declared unconstitutional. And he's aware. No, no, see. Mr. Abler, Mr. Abler, my brother Tomaklo understands very well that, uh, you know, the constitution of the republic is the superior law of the land. And the constitution of the republic is what he used. He used the same constitution of the republic to argue ex parte, senator, Ask him whether Session 20 was dealt with in Zanato. Ask him. Mr. So Gary Nimako, in Zanato, Session 20D of the representation yeah, of the people was in dealt with. Exactly, so you come out. And that is why I'm saying that. It is only proper that the electoral laws of this country are construed as a whole. You don't pick and choose what you want because it mm. is convenient okay. today. So, 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 Respectfully. so, you see, you see, you see, uh, you see Mr. Mr. Sky, it's a simple matter. Let us allow the Supreme <laughs> exactly. to deal with this matter as they have taken it there, which you have taken it there, and the court did it deal with it in an expeditious manner, one way or the other. So we we'll see. I agree. Whether 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 they are right. Okay. Or we are right. Gary, I'm staying. Gary, I'm staying with you. I'm staying with you. I just wanted to know. We know that a resident of a place called Nuba Mbatapa filed a writ at a second day high court challenging the NDC MP uh, Jomoro Dokas Afu Tofes eligibility as legislator, contending that she had dual citizenship prior to the 2020 election, contrary to the country's laws. From your perspective. Is this a similar issue with the one we just discussed, or are there any fine lines of difference? I believe non-lawyers so are watching. Case, we, we, case, we want case, some, some quick case, education. I believe that case, I believe, you know, the lawyer sitting there is the same lawyer conducting the case. <laughs> I've been warning him. I've been warning him. I've been warning him to be very, very careful <laughs> with that particular case. But he's the one conducting the case. Well, that case is simply very partial with this particular case in the uh, in, uh, same house. And I can I can I can tell you from the way things are going, most likely there's a looming uh, uh, by election happening very soon. And if he, he he has confirmed that there will be a looming looming by election because he understands the law very well. Thomas Klo understands the law very well, and he knows very well that all these people they ought not to have been allowed to contest in the first place. They ought not allowed to have to, have, to contest in the first place. They, they, they should be allowed to contest in the first place. They, he knows. He knows. So you think this one is even more simple than the uh, Jati question from your view? Oh, they are all in the same in the same in the same ship. Although that case has traveled further than this one, this one has not traveled that long. Because Jati question case, you know, uh, I started the case at uh, at uh, Winneba, sorry, uh, uh, Cape Coast High Court. Mm -hmm. Obtain the injunction and all that. Post injunction, I handed over the matter to Mr. Frank Davis Esquire to continue. 
basically, I'm telling you, having reviewed it, all the files, I reviewed all the files and all the legacy petitions from Jomoro to 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 Asinov, Tejima South, uh, uh, Savuluku, and all the cases. I reviewed all the all those files. I'm telling you, the file that Tomaku is working on is in parallel pursuit with the same file as uh, Asinov. I see. Is that the same view you hold? Not at all. And that is why you notice that, for instance, in the Jomoro matter, mm -hmm. the manner in which the judge in Cape Coast proceeded with the assent of matter, mm -hmm. there's a different turn. Mm -hmm. In this case, an opportunity had been given to us to, as it were, file what we call witness statements. Mm -hmm. So witnesses will be called, their testimonies will be tested. It is on that basis that the court can make a pronouncement whether or not the Honorable Dockers was qualified or is qualified to continue as the MP for the good people of Jomoro. That determination has not been made yet. And like I always point out, if you look at the manner in which the High Court judge proceeded with the assay of matter, it's a different manner in which this. Remember that we are dealing with Canadian law on citizenship. We are dealing with Ivorian law on citizenship. Completely different. The mode of renunciation and what have you are completely different. Significantly, my learned uh, friend uh, Gary is not involved in that one. I'm doing that one with uh, my senior uh, Frank Davis and uh, Bright. And I mean, we are proceeding in a very beautiful manner. Mm. I do not want to. But you, you are optimistic that. Your, 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 your client will have success? So far, we, 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 we have put a very good case, and that is why we are going on the merits. All right. Let your witnesses come. We will test. Our witnesses will equally be tested. Mm. The judge ultimately will make findings of fact, will All make right. pronouncements we'll, on we'll, the merits. We'll, we'll take well. a short break. When we come back, we'll see if we can touch briefly Techiman South. I know both of you may not, yeah. Yeah, you are not direct, but he's probably involved as well. So this is still the point of view. Gary, thank you for staying. We'll come back to you. We're trying to understand all the legal gymnastics as <laughs> parliament also takes shape. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. So tonight we are trying to really walk through three key cases which may determine the configuration of our parliamentary majority or minority. We've dealt with uh, Asin North extensively. We've dealt briefly with Jomoro. We'll spend the last few minutes looking at Techiman South. And on that case, I know Gary is keyly involved, but that case was brought by the NDC, yes. I believe, because they are not even talking about citizenship or anything. They're talking about how the coalition was done and the numbers involved. What is your quick understanding of what the NDC is asking for in Techiman South? No, we are basically saying that if you look at the Techiman South conversation, mm. it's about coalition. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that if the election or the results as collated in the various polling stations are properly collated, mm -hmm. our candidate, Christopher Bayre, mm -hmm. should be the candidate declared as the winner of mm. the election. Thankfully, we are before the judge at Winchi, and our witnesses are being cross-examined. We are believing that we should be closing our case pretty soon for the respondent here, that's the MP, uh, Martin Ajay Kosa, to open his defense. So that mm. is where we have got into okay. in respect of the Teachman South right. one as well. Gary, what is the feeling from the candidate at Jim Sarkozy's legal team about this case. I know Obviously, you are, he's you are, sitting on tenterhooks. No, um, let, me, let me get okay. there, Gary. Gary, he claims your, 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 your client is sitting on tenterhooks. Is that the case? Oh, who is the tenterhooks? At Jim and Sarkozy, the, 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 the MP. You know, Bernard, let us understand some few things. Number one. Martin Corsa's case in uh, the team and South. It is true. I've been traveling up and down, up and down. But at the same time, you know, my senior, Van uh, uh, Davis, has been doing a very good job working with me closely on that matter. 
and we've been a very good job for for the candidates who is who in my view is the legitimate mp who has been elected by the good people of uh, the team myself now what exactly is the matter that we are dealing with they've gone to the polls they conduct the elections there was no complaint in any polling station and Bernard Apple listen to me from the evidence so far in any polling station of any complaint of voting of any electoral parties or whatsoever election has been compiled collation has been conducted now don't forget that collation is only an aggregation of or a summation of the various polling stations. That is all. It's all the collection. Nothing more, nothing less. Collection was done. Martin was declared a winner. And then they said they don't understand. And people who ought to have known better were creating havoc and creating mayhem at the collection center to try to create problems at the place. In fact, if I'm not going to the matter, I would have known even that the whole thing, as it happened, there was no point in the way they, what they, way they, the way they behave was even wrong. Then now, as been collected, he has been declared a winner. What else is there to determine again? But in any event, once he filed in court, we will see how the court will go about it. But I'm telling you, from the evidence so far, it is very clear that nobody, no police agent, Nobody complained from any of the polling stations. Nobody. I did the cross addition myself. Nobody complained. Mm. Quick question for so, you. So what is that what is there to complain about, about summation? Mm. Because summation is only an aggregation of what happened at the police station. Yeah, but there can be a, a there can be a, a a wrong summation so they can it's possible for the and i'm not necessarily oh, defending it's yeah, possible to have it's possible to have Bernard, accurate figures Bernard, from a polling Bernard, station Bernard, which will be wrongly Bernard, collated is it not but i think it's a wrong summation it's a wrong summation you only go back to the the route which is the the polling station itself and then begin to add up and see whether what they have the polling station vis-a-vis -vis the summation it is wrong or it is right. So far, everything is telling. Mm. So what is the case at at at, at the myself? That they 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 are allowed, they are making me travel up and down, up and down, up and down. They are making and you. knows that he's worrying me. <laughs> he knows very well, but he's not advising me to stop this case. Okay. Look, I told him, and I told him when they're quiet. I said, look, come on, come the people should give us a say enough because that case it is wrong and then we will give you uh john warren <laughs> <laughs> are you doing horse trading outside the court procedures now is that what you're saying well no because you know because i know very well that i say enough whatever they, whatever they do you see let me tell you something uh musamle mm. We as lawyers, we know when your case is bad, your case is bad. But you know what the case is bad. You know what the lawyers do? They employ the latest. Tama Close is in there, he knows very well. There are seen enough cases, it's a very bad case for them. He knows very well. He knows. I'm not prejudicing that he knows very well. And I mean, I'm telling you that look, from the information I received about the the moral, whatever they call it, the Jomoro case, whatever. I hear that the Jomoro case, hmm. even when we win the court case, the candidate probably may not be good for us to win the ultimate outcome of the whatever. That's what I've been told. As whether well the facts have changed on the ground, for now, hmm. I don't know. I'm so so, so you are, there's, there's legal calculations and political calculations. So I'm saying, I'm, so I told them that, look, the bottom line is that they have to leave a sin north for MPP. Because whatever it is, like that case, they know very well that what they did was strong. Because, you see, if indeed the candidate obtained the second organization on 26th of November 2020, 
and did and did uh, uh, what do you call it uh, 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 a declaration that I was only a Ghanaian citizen. As at, as at uh, October 5th, 2020. Mm. Ah, Mr. Abdullah, please tell me. Mm. Even my, 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 my daughter Kayla, come here. Ah. <laughs> Kayla's family here. You can tell them that they are wrong. Or <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's end, let's, let's, let's end on so a final please. question. So have, please, have, so please. Have, have, the matter is very simple. I have a final it's question for you. For both of you, quickly. I understand that what they have done, they are wrong. That is, that should be Fair enough. Wrong. How That's optimistic are you that these matters can be determined in time? Because when I was in university, there was a famous case of Ayawasu West Wogon, <laughs> where even Ajikamu, yes, where George Ajikamu, 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 and uh, even Rebe, though he won Rebe the Kadoche. case, Rebecca Adote had spent four years in Parliament, and even though Ajikamu won that case, eventually he spent four years fighting you know, the case. You know, so my question you know, is, you know, how sure are you that you know, the system will, will dispense with justice you know, and tradition? Uh, uh, you know, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, just... You know, uh, in court matters, in court matters me, and, me and my brother, we are not judges. So we cannot decide, mm. we cannot know where the matter will end. We cannot know. Mm. It's not possible. But you can, you you can determine how it ends by the way you conduct yourself. Both um, of you. Yeah, okay. So, for instance, oh, no, in uh, no, no, Jamoro... You can push the matter expeditiously. But as how, how do it will end, you don't know. Because you see, you can go to court thinking that you have an iron cast case. Mm. But you may lose. I, I get yeah, it. Yes, so, so like he rightly pointed out, if you look at the Jomoro matter, for instance, the judge has been clear mm -hmm. that expedition is required mm -hmm. so that ultimately the better person gets to represent the people. You will not waste so time. At the core of it is the question of expedition. Okay. If you look at the other cases, I mean, like Tichiman South, witnesses have been cross-examined. Mm -hmm. That tells you the speed at which the judge really wants to resolve the matter. Mm -hmm. So if you look at overall, the skill sets that have been employed by the judges so far is to, as it were, organize the processes in such a way that you conclude. But like he rightly pointed out, how I proceed is a different matter. Remember that as seen of the judgment was given in July. Mm -hmm. We are still not done with the determination of the appeal. Mm. So Techman South, a decision may come, they want to go for an appeal. That may also take a couple of time. Mm -hmm. Much the same Jomoro. So Yes, lawyers would want these matters concluded as quickly as you can, mm. but it does not always operate the way you would like it. But like I pointed out, we are in a situation where the dynamics, the numerical strength in Parliament had put our brothers in the MPP on the edge. Fair enough. And obviously, they are deploying all the tools, including executive powers, mm. to ensure that they change the dynamics in Parliament. Regrettable as it is, we are equally up to the task to ensure that at the end of the day, we protect the seats that we have genuinely won. Right. Like 30 seconds, he said that, oh, maybe we may want to do a swap, Jomoro or this. But do you know that significantly, as enough, assuming without admitting that the court even says, that education is not qualified. Do you know that if the Electoral Commission opens nomination today, he will be deemed qualified because now he has a certificate of renunciation. And I've told Gary, that is a cost 90 fight. Because there's a gentleman who won the seat by over 2,000 votes. First time. All right, thank you. And he's aware. We'll leave it here. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Edu Jitamaklo, NDC legal team member, Gary Nimaku, MPP legal team member. Thank you so much for giving us this uh, privilege of listening to your sites. We will be following the cases and hopefully we will learn what happens. So that's all we have time for, for tonight. We've been talking about the three cases that have to do with parliamentary seats. My guest in studio, Gary Nimakun, was on Zoom. Edwidge Tamaklo was in the studio. The Business Dashboard is next. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.